I've had a, um, a question or a, an inquiry from a young potter named Becca who's working with cramped clay and uh, it's how do you protect your hands from damage. I don't think cramped clay damages your hands. My hands aren't rough at all. Um, they're quite soft. It works as a kind of abrasive. It's like an emery board. And it, it, my hands are soft. It's just the, 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 having your hands constantly in and out of water and not drying them properly or not moisturising them, I don't, but I'm quite lucky. Uh, but if you moisturise your hands, you're not going to get rough skin from working with cramped clay any more than you are with ordinary clay. It's the constant in and out of um, water and drying your hands that makes your hands uh, rough. Uh, like I say, my, my hands are quite, so they're quite soft from working with the rough clay. It, it wears all the old callousy type skin off. The only time, damage, time you damage yourself when you work in this is when you trap your hand between the clay and the wheel head. The grit can make uh, quite bad damage on the outside of your finger there. Um, but the secret to that is don't put your hands right down to the wheel head when you throw. And I'm going to show you in a second how I do it. Uh, another thing is that you throw with slip, don't throw with water. Water tends to wash all the clay away from the out of the um, the body of the clay, and it makes it coarser and coarser. Um, the reason I like using this clay is I'm trying to get a really coarse effect, like they do in Japanese pottery. The mashiko clay is very short. I don't know if you can see it there. When you carve it with a when you carve it with a, a wooden tool. It leaves uh, quite a rough surface. So uh, I'm just going to show you a quick demo now of how I centre the clay and use it, and uh, hopefully that'll clear up a few misunderstandings. Okay, this is a um, this is a 500 gram ball of clay. I'm just going to show you what to do. What, to do, what I do to avoid damage. It's trapping this part of your hand on this piece of clay here. Now obviously the theory behind the centering is that you centre down to the wheel head. Normally you would do that with this part of your hand and that's what causes the damage. I don't. You can see there there's a bit of roughness there. I just use a tool, a wooden tool. finish the clay to the wheel head and there's no damage to your hands. Also, you have to make sure that there's slurry on your hands, not water, and my hand isn't touching the wheel head. Normally you would do that, you can hear it, to get this seal here so the, pop, the, the clay doesn't fly off the wheel. But once it's sealed, it's sealed, that's it. So I'll throw everything now from about three millimetres, eighth of an inch, above the wheel head, my finger isn't touching it. Okay, same again. None of it touches there. I can feel, if I put my hand towards there without pressing, I can feel the grit on the wheel head and it damages the skin and rubs the skin away. Um, but if you throw with little flames left there, you can always trim it off later. Then we'll just do a T-ball. This finger here is pressing almost to the wheel head, but not quite. You can hear the clay, they hear the sand in this clay on the grog. Just keep slurry on the clay. slow the wheel down really slow for these T 
keyboard just so I can get more sort of character into it. So that's the secret, not a secret, just the method I've worked out from it, is um, down your clay on your hands, slurry, and don't trap your, don't trap your side of your hand on the wheel head. As far as everything else goes, that's it. Thank you.